Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark Spencer. With me is Steve Martin. Hey, Steve. Hey, Mark. How you doing? <laughs> we're still in our pattern closet. <laughs> we are. We are. So, uh, welcome. And today we're talking, uh, actually continuing on conversation about Final Cut Pro, specifically the 10.0.6 update. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're talking about export. And, and on a previous episode, we talked about bundles and destinations. But there's actually a lot more you can do now uh, when you want to export and share your masterpiece, right? Right. Um, we want to talk about range-based selections, chapter markers, and then exporting keywords if you're going to upload to, let's say, a file sharing site like Vimeo or YouTube, which uh, keywords are essential nowadays because it's it's all about finding your stuff now. It's a metadata world yes, that we live in. Okay, so let's dive right in. Okay, so, um, pardon, pardon them, we're looking at a diver, so. Uh, <laughs> so we're, uh, we get this, uh, this, this, little piece I've uh, shot with an underwater GoPro camera in California, and we want to export this to Vimeo, and we want to use a piece of it, and we add it, want to add chapter markers. Let's talk about range-based exports first. Uh, let's say I'm working on a longer piece, and I, I'm, I don't really want to export the entire thing. I just want to export a piece. That's simply skim to where you want uh, the, the piece to start, and just press I, set an endpoint, skim to where you want the piece to end. Maybe it's even there. I'm just going to just halfway through there and set O. Okay, so maybe um, you're working with a client and you've made a change to part of it and they don't need to watch the whole thing all over again. So you can just export the piece that's changed. That's right. Now, but, one thing that confuses people, yeah, uh, I, I, was had, say. I, I had a, a person uh, call me or write me and they're saying, you know, I don't understand it. It looks like only one thing is selected. Right, it looks like only the primary storyline is selected. So it looks like it's only going to export the clips on the primary storyline. Which isn't true. I mean, the way it, Final Cut works, it only s makes a selection on the primary story. But anything within that range, so in other words, this secondary storyline, this title, and these music clips will be so, exported. So all the connected clips are included. That's and right. And anything in that range, which is what you'd expect, right? You're exactly. exporting a whole range. And that's an important point. You expect everything within the range to be exported. Okay. okay. So it's pretty simple, straightforward. The other thing is chapter markers. Well, so wait, you set the range and you're done? You, oh, when, when sorry. You go to, no, when you go yeah. to export, it, it exports that range? Yeah, so when and you go to the okay. destination menu, and then whatever you choose here is a destination. So if I, if I chose Apple Devices uh, 720p, and I export and I go to, I'm not going to change any of the settings here, but as soon as I, I choose share, um, it's going to share that movie and it's going to export. And, so, and that piece of it. And that little piece of it. And it's going to Okay, so, so you do want to remember, you want to make sure if you want to export the whole thing that you don't have a range selected. That's right. Okay. That's yeah, a okay. really important point. Because there's no other choices you need to make after that at Correct. all. Correct. Okay, got it. So the other uh, option is, and by the way, it's background processing, so I can keep working while, while it's while churning it's away in the uh -huh. background, is this new uh, chapter markers. And chapter markers, of course, chapter markers are, are essential if you're exporting to DVD or Blu-ray and you want to give your viewers navigational uh, control over the disc. Or even just QuickTime movie, right? Well, even that's even more so because QuickTime is what's delivered on iDevices and mm -hmm. web, and you want it, and you, you could select your chapter. But more importantly, QuickTime movies support what are called poster frames. And the poster frames are little representational thumbnails that go with a chapter marker that kind of cue the, uh, the, the viewer what that is. So you can tell what you're jumping to. What you're jumping to. Okay, so if you're Which, watching a movie on an iPhone or iPad or something, and you just want to go to something, you can use the chapter marker representation? Yes, yeah, the little poster frame, which okay. we're going to look at. This. So let's say I want to export this out, and let's say that that's what, where I want to be a chap. I want a chapter there. So just M to set the marker. M. M, so really, M, M. M to set the mark, M to bring up the edit marker window. Okay. Okay. M, M. So, yeah, just like in previous version of Final Cut. Uh -huh. uh, you have three marker types. You have, uh, you have uh, standard, to do, and then there's your chapter marker right okay. there. Okay. And standard and to do are what, we've, what we're used to. Right. But the new thing is this chapter marker. Right. So like a standard marker is red until it's completed, then it's green. Um, and then you have standard markers is blue, just, just okay. kind of a cue point or what have you. You can use them in all kinds of different ways. And then the chapter marker is orange. Okay. okay. So in this case, I'll call this uh, lots of fish. Okay. So there's my chapter. Okay. okay. <laughs> now, pretty creative, huh? <laughs> so then you have this thing called a pin. Now, this is called a poster frame pin. And it allows you to go through and choose the frame that best represents that chapter marker. So, ah, because your chapter marker might start on black, for it instance. Might it might be a fade up. It might be a black, or maybe yeah. there's a frame where there's not a lot of fish. Like over yeah. here, that maybe there's not as many fish. Well, there it looks like there's a lot of fish. Or so whatever. you can choose a representative fr representative frame right. from anywhere, anywhere in the, at all in, in your uh, project. Let's see, yeah, anywhere at all. Wow. 
Uh, any frame, it's fantastic. I mean, I, I you can even go backwards. You can go backwards. Else. Yeah, exactly. So, Actually, that's useful. You might have a bunch of titles at the beginning or something, and you might want that title to be a poster frame. So, great. Okay. So, actually, I don't know if it works with titles. Let's see. Let's put it over here. Yeah. So that you, that could be a poster frame. Ah, perfect. Now, and again, I want to point out that this is um, poster frames aren't supported in DVD or Blu-ray, so you're only going to get the chapter name, but not right, the, not right. the actual poster name. Poster frame. Okay. So now, when you go ahead and export this, um, you know, go ahead and just choose some AV, click share, and it's going to turn away in the background, and it'll include that chapter marker. Nice. So the last thing I want to talk about is exporting keywords, essentially what um, these video sharing sites need to be able to find your content, because there's so much content out there right now. Uh, keywords will certainly help people locate your stuff. All right, so it's a way of, of embedding keywords without going to a site and typing all the stuff it in, all in yeah. at, a, at the site. You can do it here, and that automatically gets uploaded and included, so when people search for your video, they can find it. Exactly. Okay, so how does that work? So, one thing you want to be, you, you, you want to step out of the actual timeline by going to the project library. Okay. Okay, so in this case, you select the project that you want to keyword tag. So, in this case, I'm going to select this uh, uh, Travis vs. Dive project, and then with the inspector open, you want to go to the share uh, button right there, and you'll okay. see that there's all your um, meta tag tokens right here. Calls them attributes. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're in the attribute section, but really what these are are tokens, and these tokens represent a string of text. Okay, so like the name, that name is representative. It's, it's, a, it's a token that will extract the name of the project and turn it into so, a keyword. Oh, so you don't actually have to type anything. Nothing. Because there's already metadata associated with this clip. Correct. So the default set of, of keywords, there's nothing for you to do. It's going to, by default, it's going to upload whatever the name of this project is. That's right. Okay. And even not only that, but what this video is about. Oh, and then it'll so extract the name, project. Travis First okay. Dive. But more importantly, I can actually I can actually add additional tags. I can call this diving or a scuba diving. So that's a that's a tag, a scuba diving, right? Okay. And so when people type in scuba diving, this will be tagged. So then when you when you tab out of that, does that become a little a token there? Its own little no. token? No, because that's a specific word. These are references to the metadata, but this is the actual word right, itself right. that you want in there. Got it. Okay. Current user is who's logged in right now. Okay, I'm, so I'm not log logged in as you because you're the owner of this computer. So it'll set you as the, the creator of okay. this content. But then, of course, you could change that. You could change yes. that. And then it'll also take all your events and any keywords associated with clips. And it'll actually, like, all of your clips were tagged different ways. I mean, your, your clip names were. Uh, you had keywords attached to different clips. It'll yes, take all it'll of that. Take all, so by default, it sucks in all that data associated with it. So you need to be a little careful. You need to realize that's going on. If you use some kind of funky keywords, yeah. that, that that's all going to be associated metadata. But that's fantastic because usually those are the totally appropriate things to search on. Uh, absolutely. But even more importantly, if you go to this little pop-up here, you can actually go, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit here, is that you can actually edit these fields. Well, there was a bunch more you could add, too, before yeah, you even yeah, edited them. Uh, yeah, you can actually, let me go ahead and close this. You can add additional fields. Like, Any for these. example, like say you are doing a network, TV network, or a yeah. show, and or a season number, you can add that as a field. Okay. So you can put your show name in here. You can, uh, and this is called a token. This little guy right yeah, there. Yeah, it's called a token. Okay. Or maybe I want to put range or producer or genre or whatever. Like genre could be here. I can, I could, I can top type in here or whatever. Document. Horror. You know, horror. <laughs> it's about to be eaten right. by the giant monster orange so, fish. So, point is, is that I can, okay. I can add additional fields. Okay. Okay. And then you can also edit these fields by going down here, and it brings up the sh uh, edit share fields. And then you could, you can actually uh, create your own over here. Um, you have. Uh, your, all them, the info and the date and the time. Um, so this is all the metadata that's available for for this. Uh, what? No, it's not quite. So these are tokens well, that are available yeah, like based example, on the metadata. Exactly. Okay. So under TV show, like it says, it's going to extract the name. But under TV show, I really need to actually have it included with a like a, a rating. rating tag. Okay. And maybe I want it the current date for that show. Okay. So see what I'm saying? I'm and so actually you can build your own. You can build your own metadata set sets. of tokens associated with, with this show. this show. Okay. Right. Exactly. With that field. Yeah. So got it. Got so it. you it's it's really really handy because again. Saves you from having to type all this stuff out manually. You're going to be uploading a, a, a video with you want certain tags. And by the way, each of those tags is associated with a given project. So notice when I click on another project, I get another totally set different. Of totally different. Okay. And you would want that because I'm going to select those tags are specific to that project, right, to right. that show. There might be whatever 12 episodes or 20 episodes in a show. I want specific tags for that show. So you could just duplicate that project for another version of it, and all the work you've done to set it up is done. 
there, there's nothing to type in there. Nothing to type nothing in. Nothing to type yeah. in. You don't have to type. In, you don't even have to type it here. It's just done. So yeah. all that metadata will be associated with exactly. it. Exactly. Got it. Got it. Pretty fantastic. Pretty handy, especially uh, since many people are sharing their work online now. It's required. I mean, you just you've got to tag things. It's like I have twelve thousand photos and I photo and I didn't tag them appropriately. And now I can't find anything. Of course, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, I got to get better about it, and uh, and you should too in tagging your projects with metadata. Cool. Yeah. Steve, thank you. Uh, RippleTraining.com for more information about using Final Cut Pro 10 and related applications. Uh, there's training specifically on what's new in 10.0.6. Uh, 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 in, in depth, yes. In depth. And there's training if you've never used Final Cut Pro 10 before at all, that's not what you want. That's about the new features. What you want is the Apple Pro Video Series, also on RippleTraining.com, that covers the entire application uh, for somebody who's new to it. So thank you, Steve. And thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.